For many years in the x86 market, Intel simply dominated, with AMD being relegated more towards the budget range of processors. But things have changed significantly since the launch of the original Zen architecture. Ever since then, the two companies have been jostling backwards and forwards, and AMD oftentimes comes out ahead, particularly when it comes to core count. And this is true across multiple different uh, market segments, including, of course, mobile and servers. But with the Ryzen 7000 series and Intel's 13th generation processors, well established in terms of what they offer. The question is, what comes next? And in this video, as you probably guessed from the title, we're going to be discussing just that. There have been a lot of updates recently in terms of leaks from both companies, and I really wanted to put this video out as kind of just a jumping point to update you on several aspects of specifications for both companies, particularly given I've been hearing a couple of very interesting things concerning Zen 5 based on some updates that just happened a few days ago. I want to discuss release date information, updates to architecture, as well as that all important performance. There have been a lot of leaks and rumours swirling around Zen 5 at the moment, so that seems a great place for us to start. So, with the very basics then, AMD's own roadmap hints that we're going to be seeing the processors across both 3 and 4 NM process. And of course, this is true, given AMD themselves state it. The IO die is 6 NM due to it not benefiting so much on a smaller process, hence AMD can save money on this cheaper node. Desktop, generally speaking, is produced on the 4NM process, with APUs being produced in two variants. Some Strix Point low-end parts are for 4NM, and high-end parts are on 3NM. Servers also see a split of, of sorts, and then we're also left with Zen 5C, dense, which of course is also on the 3NM process. I want to get us all on the same page, so what I want to do is provide a slide from a video I released late in March. Now this information is old, hence the fact that it actually states that, and I'm not going to read out all of this stuff because again, some of this information is now no longer in date. There have been several changes, but I just want to give you guys this information so you can see how it compares to the update that we're going to go through in just a moment. So, to my current understanding, a number of things are wrong, not least of which because AMD themselves have decided not to go through the implementation. You'll notice that back then I was told that L2 caches are larger, and Jim over at Adore TV has been reporting that test CPUs have both a 2 and 3 megabyte L2 cache configuration. But I've been told by multiple sources that this was at one point correct, Zen 5 was being tested with these larger caches in the aforementioned configurations, but now AMD have decided to stick with just one megabyte of L2 cache. I was also told that this is due to numerous reasons, including die space versus performance just wasn't worth it. You can see here that according to Jim's slides, at 3 megabytes, which is 3 times the L2 cache of Zen 4, there was a roughly 7% increase in multi-thread performance. So, Ultimately, this was just not something that AMD felt was worth it. I will say that it's likely, therefore, L2 cache is one megabyte across all versions of Zen 5. I would love to be wrong, given, well, my own information did report that they were testing higher variants, but I don't think this is the case. I do, however, still feel that Jim's information for the L3 cache is probably correct. As you can see in the older slide, my information there was that separate CCX's L3 was unified, but I think this was either a change that just didn't get incorporated, was plain wrong, or basically someone screwed up with the messages when they basically meant it more like Jim. Either way, people are speaking different languages, info gets spread across different people, and anyway, stuff can change on a dime, but so far I do think Jim's information is right here. IPC gains are a very difficult story to get right, because frankly, not only do you get told different figures, but it becomes very difficult to know what those figures are referencing. Is it a very specific workload? Is it multi-thread? Is it single thread and so on and so on. As you saw from the previous slide, I was being told multiple different figures and even more recently I've been told close to 30% for one thread. Now frankly, this would be absolutely obscene if this is true. Again, this is one of those things where I would love for it to be true, but most of my best sources are telling me to taper those expectations and on a 1T workload, about 20% 
for desktop seems to be correct. If we look at Zen 1 to Zen 2, then Zen 3, in this official slide here from AMD, as well as this follow-up slide, well, this basically shows us some best-case scenarios at AMD's previous architectures. Now, you have to remember that A, a target is not necessarily hit, and B, different workloads can definitely vary, well, a lot. So, it's very difficult to really talk about IPC in that respect. I personally, though, am expecting around 20%. I would love for it to be much higher. I would love for it to be uh, considerably higher. I'd love, like, you know, something ridiculous like 80% IPC. But again, I want to try and taper you guys' expectations. I've had some sources tell me that it could be up to 30%, but most sources are telling me it's close to around 20%, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I'm also being told that AM6 potentially will be the exclusive home for Zen 6. Now, when you think about it, AMD themselves have confirmed support for the AM5 platform throughout 2025, but this could well be, well, just APUs based on Zen 5. Um, or even X3D chips, because realistically, Zen 4, uh, sorry, Zen 5 is going to launch in 2024, and then every two years, roughly speaking, you see a new architecture from AMD release. So that would be 2026, which would fall outside of this 2025 promised support date. Now, I will say that this is a single source, so I would not go in with this with a huge amount of confidence. But logically speaking, I wouldn't be surprised as by that point, we're probably moving on to different uh, things like, you know, different PCIe versions. So perhaps that could be another reason. But yeah, let's have a quick look at the updates. Again, I'm not going to read out all of this stuff because quite honestly a lot of it is just very logical at this point but ipc gains around 20 percent uh some sources have told me 25 percent plus but i think one um sorry i think the um single thread performance around 20 percent is quite likely zen 5 will be for granite ridge zen 5c will be for apus and servers i think the wider decoders is probably very accurate new cpu instructions including fp16 avx512 i'm very confident in. L1 caches being larger, very confident in. I've got quite high confidence in the L2 caches being only one megabyte. I've had some older sources tell me they're larger, but I do think that it is only for internal testing, which didn't see the light of day. And um, yeah, 16 cores, 32 threads for um, Zen 5. I've got quite high confidence in this. Some more um, higher configurations apparently at some point or another were considered, but allegedly it's not going to happen, and predominantly this is due to Intel. We'll go into some Intel stuff in a moment, but yeah, um, I'm pretty certain some of this information is still going to be wrong, because things can of course change before release, but it does also quite closely match to AMD's official slides on their plans, where they mention things like performance and efficiency, AI improvements, and a couple of other tweaks. So what about Intel? Well, Intel's own plans have changed significantly since the originally intended Meteor Lake launch for desktop as well as uh, Raptor Lake and, of course, Arrow Lake. I've covered this several times in the past, but I just want to summarize some of this and also give you a couple of updates. So, as you can see from this overview slide here, the 14th generation, obviously we're on the 13th now, is going to be the Raptor Lake refresh. It's going to be on the same socket. Basically similar in specifications, albeit some voltage frequency optimizations, potentially some more e-cores in the mid-range. Again, this is one of those things where I would love for the specifications, for example, let's say the caches or something, to have been drastically improved, but I do not think this is the case. The 15th generation will be a... Well, it's going to basically be both Meteor Lake S and Arrow Lake S. Um, the lower end up to the i5s will be based on Meteor Lake. I'm told Meteor Lake, my updated information, it's single digit IPC gains is the performance versus Raptor Lake. Meteor Lake will be six cores for the performance. They're based on Redwood and eight energy efficient cores. They are Crestmont. Um, I'm told that the Meteor Lake S has just he uh, hit, excuse me, the ES1 phase. This is in April and uh, Meteor Lake P has hit ES2 in March. Arrow Lake, meanwhile, will be I7 and I9s, for example, the 15900K or whatever. It will be eight performance cores, Lion, 16 energy efficient cores, Skymont. The 
IPC is about 18 to 20 percent over Raptor Lake, according to one source, and around 20 percent over Meteor Lake, according to another source. So obviously, it's quite difficult to know exactly which of those is right. But I'm certainly not expecting an absolute massive IPC gain at this point. The e cores are apparently impressive, but I haven't been given specific details. At least ones I'm super comfortable with. DDR5 only. Socket 1851. 200 series board, uh, sorry, 800 series board, and 125 watts like that actually matters any. Naturally, there are a number of questions outside of the performance that we need to measure AMD and Intel against, such as core counts, 1T and NT performance, yes, but what about power consumption, heat output, price, the platform, and not least of which, how it will affect things like server and laptops. Zen 5, Arrow Lake, all of these different processors, of course, are going to be very interesting to compare against one another. But these leaks, we simply do not know how they're exactly going to stack up against one another. This is particularly true given we don't know things like power consumption, heat output, and even how they scale across different memory configurations. Like, for example, the latency of memory. Does that matter so much with the next generation? What about clock frequency and all of this different stuff. It's going to be very interesting though to see how AMD and Intel not just push their CPUs but also iGPU performance as well given that quite frankly when you're seeing the discrete GPU market become ever more expensive there is a hell of a lot of opportunity there and I think that discrete GPUs they're not going away without any question but without well, exactly much speculation, you can easily see that uh, the lower end is almost certainly going to be taken care of by, let's say, Meteor Lake's iGPU, for example. With that said, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, well, you know what to do. Leave a like on the video and all of that stuff, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.